His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, on the anniversary of the founding day. His Majesty wished the Saudi King abundant health and happiness and Saudi Arabia and its people for the progress and prosperity under his leadership. His Majesty praised Saudi Arabia's civilizational and developmental achievements in various sectors that enhance its status regionally and internationally. His Majesty praised the long-standing Bahraini-Saudi relations and the advanced level of cooperation in various fields, affirming keenness to further enhance the bilateral brotherly relations and joint coordination to benefit both kingdoms and their peoples. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sophia Palace, Board of Directors Chairman of Eagle Hills Real Estate Investment and Development Company, Emirati businessman Mohammed Alababar, on the sidelines of the inauguration of Marasi Galleria at Marasi Al Bahrain, under the patronage of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, as well as the launch of Bina Al Bahrain Company. His Majesty the King affirmed the long-standing fraternal Bahrain-UAE relations, stressing that bilateral cooperation is flourishing in various sectors, especially trade, investment and development. He also hailed the two countries' keenness to launch joint projects that serve the development process. His Majesty hailed the vital economic development, tourism and sports projects launched by Eagle Hills in Bahrain, making it the region's most successful and pioneering company wishing businessman Alabar continued success in his endeavours. His Majesty affirmed Bahrain's constant commitment to creating the best supportive environment for investors in accordance with the highest international standards, highlighting the advantages and investment incentives provided by the Bahraini economy, as well as the opportunities to benefit from the Kingdom's strategic location and human resources in all sectors. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, sent a cable of congratulations to the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, on Saudi Arabia's founding day. His Royal Highness extended his congratulations to the Saudi King and expressed his best wishes of further progress and prosperity for Saudi Arabia and its people. He commended Saudi Arabia's development and accomplishments across various sectors which has further advanced Saudi Arabia's position on the regional and international levels. His Royal Highness noted the Bahrain-Saudi historic relations and the cooperation and coordination in various fields. He affirmed the Kingdom's commitment to further the Bahrain-Saudi relations across various sectors to meet joint aspirations. His Royal Highness sent a similar cable to His Royal Highness the Saudi Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, inaugurated the Marasi Galleria at Marasi Al Bahrain. His Majesty the King's Representative for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and several senior officials also attended the opening. His Royal Highness highlighted the wide ranging achievements witnessed by the Kingdom since the launch of the Bahrain Economic Vision 2030, adding that all-encompassing vision has provided inspiration to continue building on these achievements in line with the Kingdom's comprehensive development goals led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness highlighted the depth of relations between Bahrain and the UAE, which continues to receive the unwavering support of His Majesty the King and the President of the UAE, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nayan. His Royal Highness added that the long-standing ties have resulted in various partnerships across the public and private sectors. His Royal Highness stressed that, that the Economic Recovery Plan's major development projects sp span across different sectors, providing quality opportunities for Bahraini citizens, increasing the country's competitiveness and supporting economic diversification efforts. His Royal Highness highlighted the pivotal role played by the Kingdom's private sector as a major driver of growth for the economy. His Royal Highness noted the importance of continuing to attract investments that will benefit Bahrain and its citizens. His Royal Highness toured the mall, which have a stunning view on Bahrain's coastline, and viewed its modern and recreational facilities, noting the efforts of all parties who have jointly contributed to the project. He emphasised the importance of further expanding the economy to keep pace with the development and sustainability requirements, 
by launching economic strategies and policies that attract investments, enhancing entrepreneurship and innovation, and increasing productivity. His Royal Highness expressed the Kingdom's commitment to invest in infrastructure, educational development and trade and economic cooperation at the regional and international levels to benefit the country and its citizens. He underscored the government's commitment to further the Kingdom's economic growth and expand the total size of the economy to benefit Bahrain and its citizens. The Chairman of Eagle Hills and Founder and Managing Director of Imar Properties, Mohamed Alabar, expressed profound gratitude to His Royal Highness's inauguration of Marassi Galleria. He noted His Royal Highness's support is significant to this project and its potential to enrich the economic and cultural fabric of the Kingdom. Alabar also expressed confidence that Marassi Galleria will serve as a catalyst for further development and innovation, positioning Bahrain as a progressive and exciting destination for all. The Chairman stressed that the Marassi Galleria is more than just a shopping mall, it is a vibrant social hub, a cultural haven and a tribute to the Kingdom's burgeoning cosmopolitan spirit. An Abu Dhabi-based private real estate investment and development company, Eagle Hills, announced the signing of a cooperation agreement to establish a new real estate development company, Bana Abakhrain, as part of a strategic partnership between the private sector in the Kingdom and the UAE. With a capital valued at four billion US dollars, the company will work to support innovative and transformative real estate projects by adapting its commercial partnerships with private sector institutions and the Bahrain Real Estate Investment Company, Idema, and the real estate arm of Bahrain Mentalakat Holding Company, Mentalakat, the sovereign wealth fund of Bahrain. The chairman of the board of directors of Eagle Hills, Mohammed Alabar, noted the launch of Bina al-Bahrain comes within the framework of the good endeavours of both President of the United Arab Emirates, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nayan, and His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa, to strengthen the ties between the two countries and their people. He pointed out that these first of these joint endeavours was the launch of the Marasi al-Bahrain project, which achieved a resounding success and came to meet the needs of Bahrain society and support national efforts concerned with achieving economic development and to reflect the company's aspirations and efforts aimed at developing unique projects on a large scale. The new collaboration is a continuation of Marasi Al Bahrain's project success and will enable Eagle Hills to lead important real estate projects in Bahrain and will also work to strengthen the company's commitment to continued growth and excellence in light of the existing cooperation with an elite group of strategic partners inside and outside the Kingdom. Through the strategic deal, Abina Al Bahrain will become the leading company in the field of real estate development at the local level as it possesses a rich portfolio with prominent real estate projects spread in several strategic locations in the Kingdom, in the capital, Maharik, Northern and Southern Governorates. Bina Al Bahrain aims to advance development in the long term, in line with the Bahrain's Economic Vision 2030, thanks to its distinguished project package, with establishment of multi-use projects for residential, commercial and entertainment purposes, specifically designed to improve the experience of the community. 
This joint project seeks to create promising job opportunities for Bahrainis within the sector and multiple other sectors, including the hospitality and healthcare sectors. The project will also have a positive impact on the residential sector for Bahrainis and residents alike, as it will provide residential cities that suit all segments of society. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, met with the newly appointed Vice Chairman of the Higher Urban Planning Committee, Sheikh Salman bin Abdullah Al Khalifa at Rifa Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the capabilities of the Kingdom's national workforce and the accomplishments which have contributed to the Kingdom's comprehensive development, led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness noted the role of Sheikh Salman bin Abdullah in his government tenure in consolidating the real estate sector and adapting innovative projects that strengthen the sector. His Royal Highness also highlighted the sector's accomplishments, including the introduction of new legislations and the establishment of an institutional regulatory environment to support the sector. His Royal Highness highlighted the accomplishments of the Kingdom's real estate sector, including attracting investments, holding international conferences and exhibitions, and supporting digital transformation through the launch and development of e-services. His Royal Highness expressed gratitude to Sheikh Salman bin Abdullah for the efforts at the Survey and Land Registration Bureau, which contributed to expanding the real estate sector. His Royal Highness wished him success in his t future endeavours. For his part, Sheikh Salman bin Abdullah expressed gratitude to His Royal Highness and affirmed his commitment to, to achieve the desired goals. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, and the Minister of Cabinet Affairs, Hamad bin Faisal Al Malki, also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, met with the newly appointed President of the Survey and Land Registration Bureau, the SLRB, Bazm bin Yaqub Al Hamar, at Rifa Palace. His Royal Highness noted the pivotal role played by the real estate sector in enhancing the sector's competitiveness and the Kingdom's comprehensive development, led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. He highlighted the Kingdom's integrated legislative infrastructure and institutions that enhance the competitiveness of the real estate sector and improve the investment environment. His Royal Highness congratulated Al Hama on his appointment, highlighting his extensive experience and wished him success in achieving the desired goals of the Kingdom's real estate sector. His Royal Highness affirmed the role of the SLRB in developing the real estate sector by implementing modern initiatives and strategies that keep pace with the development requirements, as well as by providing sustainable, attractive and safe environment that encourages real estate investment. The SLRB President expressed his appreciation for His Royal Highness's commitment to enhancing the growth of the real estate sector in the Kingdom and supporting its contributions to achieving the desired goals and aspirations. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, the Minister of Cabinet Affairs, Hamad bin Faisal Al Malki, also attended the meeting. The Speaker of the Representatives Council and Chairman of the Executive Committee of the Parliamentary Division, Ahmed al Musalam, met with the Speaker of the Saudi Shura Council, Sheikh Dr. Abdullah bin Mohammed al Al Sheikh, on the sidelines of the Parliamentary Division's participation in the 14th plenary session of the Asian Parliamentary Assembly. The two sides commended the depth of the historical Bahrain Saudi relations and the development of strategic cooperation in various sectors, led by His Majesty the King and the custodian of the two holy mosques. They affirmed the support of the Joint Parliamentary Committee to the Saudi Bahraini Coordination Council, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and the Prime Minister, and His Royal Highness the Saudi Crown Prince and Prime Minister. A joint parliamentary discussion session was held, chaired by the Representatives Council Speaker and Chairman of the Executive Committee of the Parliamentary Division, Ahmed al Musalam, and the Speaker of the National Assembly of Azerbaijan and Chairperson of the Non-Aligned Movement Parliamentary Network, Professor Sahiba Kharova, in Baku, Azerbaijan. al Musalam affirmed Bahrain's keenness to continue developing relations and cooperation with Azerbaijan. 
He appreciated the efforts of Dr. Gafarova in supporting joint humanitarian causes, especially the Palestinian cause. The Speaker invited her to visit the Kingdom and sign a joint parliamentary MOU and cooperate with the Representative Council and Shura Council. For her part, Dr. Gafarova affirmed the distinguished relations between Azerbaijan and Bahrain and the interest to support the development of cooperation at various levels and fields. The Chairman of the Supreme Council of Health, Lieutenant General Sheikh Dr. Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, opened a central laboratory at the Salmania Medical Complex, which is equipped with modern and advanced medical technologies, devices and equipment. The Chairman affirmed the Council's keenness to enhance efforts to offer high-quality health services. The CEO of Government Hospitals, Dr. Mariam Al Jalama, affirmed that the launch of the project would not have been possible without the combined efforts of all. She added that the project reflects the extent of the development of the health system in Bahrain, which places it among the ranks of developed countries. The new central laboratory contains integrated systems and advanced equipment that provide the highest productivity rate in the region. It can com complete more than 12,000 samples per hour, with an increase in storage capacity by 50%. The new electronic system also contributes to the speed of receiving and analysing samples. The Minister of Information, Dr Ramzan Anouemi, participated in the third edition of Saudi Media Forum 2024, which was held in Riyadh. The forum was held under the theme, Media in a World Taking Shape, and witnessed the participation of more than 2,000 media professionals and specialists. During his participation in a session titled, Arab Media Facing Transformations, Ministerial Visions for the Future Milestones, the Minister affirmed that the support the media in Bahrain receives from His Majesty the King and with the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister attaches a great responsibility to increase achievement and development in this vital sector. Anouin we stress that the forum is one of the most prominent media events in the region with its various events and activities and highlighted the opportunity it provides to exchange opinions and experiences that advance Gulf and Arab media. Under the patronage of the BDF Commander-in-Chief, a Field Marshal, Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, the final match of the third BDF Commander-in-Chief Football Cup for the 2023-2024 session was held. The Field Marshal delegated the President of Bahrain Football Association, Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, to attend the match between the Royal Guard and the Royal Artillery teams, held in coincidence with the BDF celebrations of its 56th anniversary. The match ended with the Royal Guard team defeating the Royal Artillery teams 5-1 to one and retaining the cup title for the third time in a row.
Sheikh Ali crowned the winning team and presented them with gold medals and handed over to the Deputy Commander of the Royal Guard, Major General Ahmed Khalifa al Noemi, the Championship Cup, while the Royal Artillery team was handed over second place medals. On the occasion, Sheikh Ali conveyed their congratulations to the BDF Commander in Chief to the Royal Guard team and his wishes of success to the rest of the teams in upcoming participations. He thanked the Military Sports Federation for organising the championship. The two teams raised a memorial banner for the fallen servicemen, recalling the sacrifices for the country while performing their duty. The Bahraini-Qatari follow-up committee held its fourth meeting in Bahrain. The Bahraini delegation was headed by the Undersecretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for Political Affairs, Dr Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, and the Qatari delegation was headed by the Secretary-General of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Dr Ahmed bin Hassan Al Hamadi. The meeting discussed the topics in the agenda and agreed to reshape the Board of Directors of the Qatar Bahrain Causeway and to take the necessary measures to implement the project in line with the directors of the leadership of the two brotherly countries for the prosperity of the two countries and their people. The work of the committee comes as a continuation of its previous meetings in implementation of the Al Ula Statement and according to the will of the leaders of the two countries to achieve the aspirations of the two people. The Prime Minister's office, the PMO, held a graduation ceremony honouring the 6th, 7th and 8th intake of the Prime Minister's Fellowship Programme, following their assignment periods at the PMO. The Director General at the PMO, Ahmed Al Mahmid, gave a speech where he highlighted the importance of the programme in supporting the Kingdom's comprehensive development, led by His Majesty the King and supported by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. Al Mahmoud noted that the programme enables Bahraini citizens working in the public sector to further their capabilities and support the Kingdom's wide ranging advancement across the public sector. He emphasised that government work is based on excellence, integrity, creativity, and responsibility, which are key traits that are possessed by all members of the Prime Minister's Fellowship Programme. He conveyed to the programme's beneficiaries the greetings of His Royal Highness, noting His Royal Highness's pride in their efforts throughout their tenure in the programme. Al Mahmoud commended the pivotal role played by the members of the 6th, 7th and 8th intakes during their fellowship, all of which contributed to various successful national achievements through the tasks and responsibilities entrusted to them. He expressed aspirations for the graduates to transfer their acquired expertise and skills to their workplaces to enhance the quality and efficiency of government services and to, to deliver a more prosperous future for the Kingdom and its future generations. He thanked the organisers of the Fellowship Programme, the organisations that the Fellows work for, as well as to the families of the Fellows for their support. 
Al Mahmoud wished the fellows continued success in serving Bahrain and wished the newest intake all the best in their endeavours in supporting the kingdom's far-reaching development goals. The Under Secretary of National Economy at the Ministry of Finance and National Economy, Osama Al Alawi, gave a speech on behalf of his Prime Minister Fellowship Alumni Follow Up Committee. Al Alawi highlighted that transferring knowledge is one of the most important pillars on which the programme is founded, noting that the graduates are ambassadors for the programme. He also noted that the graduates' return to the workplaces is the first step in planting the seeds of civic development, which will be the key to enhancing and dismantling the culture of um, government institutional work. On behalf of the graduates, the Director of Public Health at the Ministry of Health, Dr. Mohammed Alawadi, expressed thanks and appreciation for His Royal Highness' sponsorship of the programme. He highlighted that the Fellows' development does not end with their time in the programme, but rather it is a beginning that sets the stage for more effort and contribution in the service of the Kingdom and its citizens. Several senior officials were also in attendance. What has been accomplished and implemented within the Economic Recovery Plan launched by the Kingdom of Bahrain in 2021 was reflected positively in the economic situation of the Kingdom, specifically the growth of the non-oil sector, which is consistent with Bahrain's Economic Vision 2030. More in this report. Developments and achievements in terms of the Economic Recovery Plan and the Bahrain Economic Vision 2030 in all sectors and numbers prove that the Kingdom of Bahrain is on the right path and preparing for the next stage. These are the results that His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister referred to as a positive economic indicators that make everyone reassured that the future vision of the Kingdom will achieve more for the benefit of the nation and citizens. The priority for implementing major development projects that were announced within the Economic Recovery Plan witnessed the completion of the implementation of 12 projects within the priority for implementing major development projects. This priority included broad frameworks that included launching new investment and industrial zones and partnerships with the private sector to implement infrastructure projects. Within this framework are the planning of five new cities, infrastructure and communication projects, tourism sector projects, the aluminum manufacturing zone, Babco modernization project, and the establishment of a commercial zone with the United States, in addition to projects in the education, health, housing, and youth and sports sectors. These accomplishments were reflected positively in the economic situation in the Kingdom, specifically the growth of the non-oil sector, as the sector recorded a growth rate of 6.6% at constant prices during the year 2022, achieving the highest growth rate since 2012, thus exceeding the targeted growth rate within the priority of developing promising sectors. The amount is 5% in 2022 which confirms the trend that the government of the Kingdom has always emphasized to reduce dependence on the oil sector. The Royal Fund for Fallen Servicemen organised a special entertainment event for families and children of fallen servicemen within the 8th edition of Bahrain Food Festival in cooperation with the Bahrain Tourism and Exhibition Authority BTEA, at Marassi Al Bahrain. This comes within the framework of the Fund's keenness to build bridges of communication with the families and children of fallen servicemen and to strengthen partnerships with various supporting bodies from the government and private sectors. Royal Fund for Fallen Servicemen Director Sheikh Khaled bin Salman bin Khaled Al Khalifa confirmed that providing support and care to the families and children of fallen servicemen and enhancing communication with them is one of the most prominent priorities for the fund continues to implement. In appreciation and gratitude for the great sacrifices made by the fallen servicemen in defence of the nation and to preserve its security and stability. For her part, BTEA CEO Sara Ahmed Bahiji affirmed the authority's keenness to organise events and programmes to support the fund to reinforce the principle of community partnership. She said that this initiative is an opportunity to communicate with the children of the fallen servicemen and their families and provide them with various aspects of support. The chairman of the Sunni Waqf Council, Sheikh Dr. Rashid bin Mohammed Al Hajri, inaugurated the Aisha bin Mohammed Al Mastrushi Mosque in Dia Al Maharak in the presence of the members of the board of directors of Dia Al Maharak Company, along with a number of officials and residents. 
The chairman delivered a speech in which he congratulated the people of Deir Maharik for the opening of the mosque, congratulating the generous philanthropists who donated to build this mosque and Deir Maharik Company for this achievement and everybody who contributed to the construction of this mosque. He appreciated the generous support from His Majesty the King and the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister in this regard. Al Fatah Highway Development Project is one of the most important strategic plans of the government programme which aims to improve traffic flow in Bahrain. The Pioneer Project contributes to meeting the current and future development requirements of Bahrain and the smooth flow of traffic in the Kingdom as it connects important streets east of the capital and is part of a larger project, the Manama Ring Road. The project serves vehicles passing through Al Fatah Highway, which has a high capacity of 140,000 vehicles per day which means raising the capacity by 61%, in addition to making the traffic movement of those coming from King al Fahad Causeway towards Maharek or Bahrain Bay area a free movement without stopping. The Coast Guard continued its inspection and awareness campaigns in various marine and coastal areas in cooperation with the Nationality, Passports and Residency Affairs and the Labour Market Regulatory Authority. This came as part of the Coast Guard efforts to enforce the law and address maritime violations in the territorial waters of Bahrain. The campaign aims to ensure the compliance of seafarers and fishermen, fishing laws and decisions regulating fishing, the validity of fishing licences for small vessels and availability and validity of marine safety tools and the safety procedures of those working on these vessels, in addition to verifying the safety of those working on these vessels. The Coast Guard emphasised the continuation of inspection and awareness campaigns, stressing the need to abide by the laws and regulations to preserve the marine environment and wildlife resources.